everyone. Thank you all for joining us for our March 2023 um, webinar in our Beef Brunch Educational Series. This month we are uh, going to have a few videos put together on working facilities that we have at one of our research stations in North Louisiana, as well as a few videos on cattle handling, basic principles of that. Um, this is a, obviously a pre-recorded webinar. We had some scheduling conflicts and meetings that took place during our normal live session time. And so we will be back with y'all live in April of 2023. Um, if y'all have any questions regarding the series or anything like that, my contact information is listed in the video and podcast descriptions. Hello everyone, I'm Lee Falk with the LSU Ag Center. I'm a regional extension agent uh, working in livestock in the northwest region of the state. We're here at the Hill Farm Research Station. We're at our main set of pens. We're going to kind of give you a little overview of, of how we work cattle and a little bit on our pens. I think our pens are kind of a, a unique deal, but then again they're not because they're put together. So you're seeing what you're going to see is over years and years of time certain aspects have been changed certain aspects have been added things have been built differently and that's a lot like most producers places you don't have uh it's very rare to see a brand new set of, of working pens that are just state of the art and, and, and all new from the get-go but what you see is people steadily work at stuff and they change things that that need to be changed and they make necessary uh necessary improvements as they go along through their operation. So starting off with, uh, we bring our cattle up through a, a lane system uh, through a gate right there, kind of where the full wither and cattle trailers are. Uh, you'll also notice, and we'll talk about it real quick while we're here, we got our loadout facility right here. Um, we have a system where we can load from either gooseneck level or we can raise up, put a pipe under it, and we can load from a, a, a semi-trailer, a, a, a double-decker pot, if you will. So that's kind of unique as well, and that system works very well. Uh, we got a little set of heifers here, and we're just going to show you briefly how we flow cattle in, in through this uh, facility. Brian and Jason are bringing them in. This is our main holding pen you see here. We do have a little bit of uh, shade here that's handy if we're holding cattle. Uh, overnight, we've got some more shade behind us that we'll see here in just a minute. So we bring the cattle up here uh, through this initial lane. They usually flow pretty good when we're coming through here. We've got the ability, as you see, Brian, to swing this gate and that can close it off and it can serve as an extra sorting pin. We'll talk about sorting here in just a minute. So as they come through and they make the turn, they're going under our barn facility. This is our main shade area. We do have a gate to shut down here to hold cattle under here. As you can see, the cattle flow pretty well to the back of our barn, and that's what we want them to do whenever we get ready to load them through the chute. Uh, real quickly, while these guys are walking back here, we'll talk about our chute just a minute. We do have a hydraulic chute. It's, a, it's definitely a benefit when we're working a lot of cattle. It's an older model. Uh, it doesn't have some of the new innovations like uh, some of these chutes do, uh, but, but it is very handy. We have load bars under here but we no longer use them. We use uh, an individual scale system that is NTEP approved and certifiable. Our race system is a power river. This is the newest component to our working pen. It is adjustable. We can adjust it uh, the biggest bulls all the way down to the wing and tail simply with the turn of the handle. So it does adjust in and that makes it very handy. We look to our right right here, we see our sorting pins. We've got three sorting pins that enable us to, to, to go three different ways, plus that bigger pin. So we have four potential areas, or five, depending on how you look at it, of, of areas we can sort as we're working the cattle. 
And we do have a hydraulic sort gate. Maybe we'll we'll see it here in just a little while. So as we're as we're coming down here, Brian's actually sorting some off. We do have concrete. When these pens were first built, they did put concrete in. Concrete was a lot cheaper then. That's no longer, uh, it's no longer as cheap an option for the uh, for the surface area of a, of a cow pen anymore. But it, it was at that time. Having these sorting pins is crucial, I think, to, uh, to a beef producer's operation. Being able to sort cattle either when you're pinning them, whether you're sorting some to sell or you're weighing your head and you're going to keep some, you're going to sell some, or just sorting through and, and making selections based on body condition. I think having the ability to hold cattle in different pins, no matter how you set it up, it is, a, is an excellent option. This lane width under this barn is, is very good. If I could change anything, Jason, would you mind opening that pin gate? One thing I would change about this facility, when Jason opens that gate back towards our race, the gate doesn't meet up exactly with our race. So if Jason were to bring out a uh, uh, heifer, uh, there's a potential that she would slip by and, and uh, get back behind where we want it. So if I could change that up a little bit, I would widen that gate up a couple of feet to where it would meet in uh, with that uh, with that race and that would create a, a ability to hold the cattle. See, that heifer's gonna think about it. If we put a lot of pressure on that heifer, she would definitely uh, pass that gate right there. We'll walk back here and we'll we'll, uh, we'll look at how we uh, float cattle through this sheet. when we're getting ready to load cattle into our race, we just have a, a, a back pen here. We've got a gate back here. Brian's gonna open that gate up. And Brian's gonna flow about four or five uh, heifers through there. We don't have an elaborate sweep system or a bud box or anything like that. It would be a nice improvement and that'd probably be the next major improvement, improvement we make. This facility, while it works very well, it is more of a two-man job. As you can see, Brian's bringing the cattle Jason going to be helping him out. Jason's going to play a role on the side here. If you can have one man bringing them from behind while Jason stands to the side and creates that movement, it, it, it works well. That'll flow through well with two people. One person is a little more difficult, as Jason alluded to in some of his videos, about creating movement from behind. We do have uh, one cut gate or, or uh, stop gate in here. This is a slide gate it's very well. A race this size really needs two. We've got one. It works for us. It might not work for everyone. But it's important to hold these cattle up close to the shoe as possible and uh, kind of uh, keep them from bunching up in the back. Our scale system, as I said, this is a certifiable scale system. We've got our monitor mounted on the other side. We have one person over there that's administering vaccines or collecting data, weights and such. We have one man working over here, usually. So it's a two-man job, works pretty good. We'll bring the animal in. If we're collecting weights, we'll stop right here, get our weights. 
and then we'll uh, move them all into the, our squeeze chute. And we'll show y'all just a little bit about our hydraulic chute and our hydraulic uh, sort gate. One thing I'm gonna make a point of is, is because when I turn this chute on, you won't be able to hear anything I say. The more uh, uh, newer, the newer, the more revolutionary hydraulic chute setups, you'll see people mount the pump and the motor in a, uh, in a location that's away, either in a barn or a good ways away from the chute. And what that does is allows you to work without the noise. So the noise can be a concern, so as you'll see. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run this effort through real quick. I'm also gonna show how we can sort. We, we've got a two-way hydraulic sort gate. It's a very simple system, but it's very effective for what we got. So we can, all, we can sort two ways coming out of it. So we'll show that as they come through. Basically, we got two ways of sorting, like we're talking about with the gate. And that's all control that you say. Hey, my name is Jason Holmes. I'm a regional livestock specialist with the LSU Ag Center. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, flight zones, point of balance, uh, some of the things that we can use whenever we're working cattle uh, through pens, through races, and through shoots. Um, uh, flight zone, uh, contrary to popular belief, is not how far the cattle will run whenever we do put pressure on them. Uh, the flight zone is basically um, if you think about a circle around uh, the animal, uh, the amount or how close we can get to that animal in terms of how much pressure we can put on that animal before we create movement. Uh, so on some animals, that, that bubble, that personal space, if you want to think of it that way, uh, uh, is going to be greater than on other animals. So um, if uh, uh, whenever we get uh, into smaller pen spaces, so whenever we bring cattle out of pasture, um, um, whenever we're moving those cattle from the pasture into a holding pen, uh, uh, that flight zone is going to be uh, big. So that personal space of that bubble is going to be larger and it's going to shrink down as we move them into smaller holding wow. pens and then actually into the race. Um, uh, so just think about it in terms of that bubble or that that circle around that animal in terms of how close we can get to it uh, in terms of the amount of pressure before we create movement is what we're talking about flight zone. All right, so one other term that we use uh, in terms of um, um, working cattle is point of balance. So generally speaking, the point of balance is going to be somewhere around the withers or the point of the shoulder of the animal. And whenever we move forward or backwards of the point of balance, we should create movement going one way or another. So if I think about the point of balance being at the withers or the point of the shoulder, so if I move straight in towards that point of balance, I should create movement forwards or backwards. So if I move forward towards her head, I should create movement going the opposite direction. Um, so if I move towards her towards the rear of her point of balance, and I don't know if she's gonna cooperate. Let me see if I can get her to stand still for a minute. So if I catch her eye, I get her to look at me and I move directly in towards right behind the point of balance, I should create movement going the other way. So if I move towards her head, I get her to move back towards the camera. So if I move towards her head, get her to move the opposite direction. So that's what we're talking about, point of balance and getting her to move in the opposite direction. So if I want her to go forward towards the camera, I'm gonna move behind that point of balance to get her to move off to my right. If I want her to move to my left, this direction, I'm gonna get ahead of that point of balance more towards her head and create movement going the opposite direction or more, uh, more towards my left. So we can use that point of balance to create movement in the direction that we want them to go. So point of balance being at the, the point of the shoulder or the withers of the animal, 
So if we want to create movement towards the back, we would move towards or towards the rear of the animal. We would move towards the head of the animal to move them off that direction towards the back. So if we want to create movement going forward, we'll move towards the tail of the animal to make cre or create movement going forward. So sometimes we're all guilty about trying to move cattle from directly behind. And something that we have to remember is that if I get right behind that animal, she cannot see me. So if I want cattle to travel in a, state li in a straight line, I'm gonna have to move from side to side to try to create that straight movement. Because if, they, if I walk directly behind her, she cannot see me. Uh, they cannot see directly behind them. So if I'm gonna create movement, I'm gonna have to move in a half moon shape on each side of them to keep that movement going straight. Uh, uh, so whenever we're, uh, we have cattle in the race and we can demonstrate that later, uh, just pushing them directly from behind uh, is not a good idea. We've got to be able to catch their eye where they can see us and they cannot see us from directly behind. So whenever we were talking uh, out in the holding pens a while ago, we were talking about the importance of, of, of not trying to work cattle from the rear. So whenever we get cattle in a, uh, in a lead up or a race like this, trying to get them up to the chute, we want to try to use the, the lead animal to draw all of the other animals with her or him, whatever we've got into the chute. So Brian's gonna demonstrate, he's gonna walk up and, and try to make, create movement uh, uh, from the back of the stack or the back of the race uh, and push animals forward. Um, and it's just difficult whenever we're, we're standing at the back, of the, the back of the stack of cattle and trying to create movement from the animal in the back and it's just gonna, everybody's just gonna keep piling up. Uh, you cannot create movement from the back uh, trying to get movement forward. But if we try to create movement from the, the front of the stack or the front of the race, and try to let this, this yellow heifer lead everybody forward. So if we create movement, then we can hopefully, and they've been stacked in here, so let's see if we can get a little bit more movement. But if we can get her to start moving, then hopefully we can create movement for everybody else. So it's important for us to make sure that we've got everything set up whenever we get ready to move cattle towards the chute. It's important for us to make sure that we've got everything right uh, in terms of uh, things that we can do to make everything flow as easily as possible. So a while ago, we did not have the gate to the scale open whenever we were trying to create movement going down the race. So we've got everything wide open now, the scale's open, the chute's open. Uh, so let's see if we can, uh, we can get some movement going all the way down. Uh, all the way out the sheet. I'm Lee Fogg with the LSU Ag Center. I'm a regional livestock agent. And I'm gonna to talk to you just a minute about the importance of, of training your cattle as they come as uh, they come through the chute. Uh, cattle have memories and they can associate bad experiences with working pens and, and, and squeeze chutes and, and races and the like. So if you have a chance and you're running cattle through, you got them in the pen, maybe during weaning, it's always a good idea to let them flow through the chute as we're doing right now without catching them. And 
what this is going to do is kind of uh, ingrain a memory in them that not every time they come through here they're going to get caught. That they're not going to have bad things happen to them from their perspective. So if you have a chance and you've know, got kept them, it's good sometimes to run through without catching them. They'll come straight through the queue. No bad experiences, they just came straight through and it'll help you out in the future.